Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Digital Art with Jesus Conde and today we're going to be working on this leaf which is a dry leaf and we're going to do all the process from the sketching till the final details of it so the first thing we have to keep in mind um, as you guys know is the reference uh, because when doing a sketching it's very important to to know what we're, what we're dealing with uh, some of the details that are on the on the sketch and well all the process of the image will come from those few images that we see at the beginning and we keep uh, uh, looking through all the process so it's very important that we have uh, our, uh, some pictures um, uh, Pinterest is very useful for that you can have uh, another screen or even on your phone, uh, have it uh, open at, at one side with the reference that you want to use or even if it's some, something real, uh, that will be way better. The difference will be maybe the you, have, you can like look at it closely and see like um, in better um, detail what's going on with the object itself. Um, <clears throat> It depends on what you're doing obviously some things are way way more difficult to have in front of you like in real life uh, but stuff like this you have the chance to go outside and pick up a, a leaf that will be very very useful so right now I'm, re I'm being really loose with the lines uh, I'm not I'm not caring too much about the the shape of it yet I'm just trying to figure out the uh, what I want to do with it. Uh, here I'm using the grab tool um, to change the 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 shape of it. It's very very useful sometimes when you're doing something and you and you feel like it's very stiff. You can just use the the grab tool and you can just morph it a bit to get it uh, right. Especially when you when your drawings are very flat, when you use the wrap tool, you get to you get to um, make that little effect where the lines are having some kind of flow. So that's very very useful. If you don't know where the wrap tool is, um, is in edit, transform, and wrap. But I put a. Um, a keyboard shortcut on my on my Photoshop um, to have it with Control W, and that really helps to speed things up. <clears throat> so while I'm doing this, I'm obviously looking at reference, so I I don't uh, lose track of what I'm doing. It's very very important that you use the, the reference all the time, and you also have a little bit of freedom. You don't have to. Uh, draw exactly what you're looking at that will be another kind of exercise that will be like a study you will be doing like a study of an object and and stuff like that but if you wanna you wanna learn to paint stuff on your own from your imagination you have to like interpret interpret the the the, the things that you look in order to create uh, new stuff and at the end you like you end up uh, drawing a little bit of all the references um, so it looks a bit different obviously uh, in terms of uh, the quality may maybe the realism but at the end is something that you made up uh, from yourself if you if you want to be like a concept artist uh, which your job will be to make ideas constantly that will be kind of like your job uh, to to reimagine stuff and do it in a way that it wasn't like that before and do a lot of research and stuff like that and right now I'm just adding some holes and stuff just to remember just to remember like the this thing is really old uh, well not not all like is is dead like it's not green is a is a brown leaf is an autumn uh, leaf fallen from the from the tree if I don't put those it will look like just a new 
leaf in the sketch doesn't make any difference if it's green or or brown so in even in the drawing you have to specify what you're doing um, in order to do good and if you have a good drawing which is very important if you have a good drawing uh, every 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 step every next step will be just way easier um, to do so right now I created a new, a new layer underneath and now um, I'm painting with the with you can do it with any brush just don't use a circle soft brush because it will be like a spray or it will, it will be like a something like that yeah you know like um, like the the tool they use to make body paints and stuff like that that will be kind of like a spray kind of thing and that is not what you want what you want right now is a is a hard brush meaning that all the edges will be just uh, hard no any soft uh, corners or edges on your brush and you just wanna uh, fill it with all the uh, like all of it with the same color um, at the beginning <clears throat> and then we're going to be applying other colors just to give some variation you have ways to put color variations to your brush but that, that is not what we're doing here right now we're going to take things uh, kind of slowly and <clears throat> build our image adding ingredients so that's basically what we're doing just adding ingredients till we achieve a level of um, quality that will uh, permit us to do detailing without having to go back uh, too much and oh I forgot this thing or I forgot this another thing so you just add these ingredients in this order and you will have a decent uh, amount of information that will allow you to keep painting uh, without any trouble so <clears throat> something that we could do is create a is to create a layer mask so if you create a new layer like that and you then do right click uh, on top of it you can just click on create clipping mask and that will connect the layers in a way that everything that you paint like that will be uh, inside of the one that you did before um, and that means that if, if, you ha if your layer is uh, completely blank there is no way to do a clipping mask okay so uh, if you draw a circle for example and or, or you, even if you make a line and you put another layer with a clipping mask on that one what you end up is painting inside of that line so that's how it works you we we painted this uh, base color and now we're painting inside of that and that will keep happening that will keep working that way until you collapse the layers then you don't have a way to to disconnect them again um, <clears throat> so remember if you have a layer with a base color just create another layer on top and do right click on that layer and then click on create clipping mask that way you have a clipping mask so right now what I did was uh, adding some color variations and what we want is to put um, some like difference in hue if you have a brown color we will be adding like a maybe like a reddish brown then like a more kind of a yellow brown and that way you have this color variation that will indicate that this um, is a autumn leaf and not just a flat brown leaf <clears throat> we're not adding lighting yet so that's what we're going to start doing right now but I like to start with the darker color so we're going to create um, <clears throat> uh, cast shadow to know where a, uh, where a cast shadow is going to be projected we need to know where the light is coming from and that's why we create this little circle there which is which means that is a uh, the lighting source so <clears throat> that lighting source will be some kind of a light bulb uh, in our imagination it will be this direction so we need to kind of uh, start painting our cast shadow in 
and you have to imagine that this leaf is laying down on the floor and because this is like going up in that direction this leaf that means that the the floor is flat so you'll have this shadow that is actually really really flat on the floor and then just uh, and, and the leaf just goes up so um, basically what you're doing is imagine that you have a lamp a light or a maybe a lantern and you will see the same effect it's, it's really easy actually to to understand not too much to do because uh, you have to you basically have to train your eye to to see how cast shadow works and the cast shadows are really important it's, it's what's really give um, the 3d kind of like the 3d uh, illusion of it because it's what it was basically what gives depth to your to your drawings so having this shadow there makes it look like the floor is flat and you have this uh, arched arched um, leaf that is going up some, some kind of a curve so that's really important something else that I wanted to do uh, you will have cast shadow on the floor obviously that's the that's the most basic cast shadow that there is you you will see it all the time when you're walking when you're at home every time that you have a light source you will have a cast shadow of you but you also cast shadows on yourself um, if you are sitting for example and you have your arm up let's say uh, well depending on where the light is coming from you will have a shadow of your arm projected on your on your body so that happens too and we're going to try that um, with the leaf there is a part of the leaf that I believe in my mind is kind of bent so we're going to try adding a shadow that looks kind of like that <clears throat> Alright, so um, for the occlusion, the occlusion is um, this kind of a, it's like a, let's say, it's kind of like a soft shadow inside of the cast shadow. And you will see that only in parts, in parts that are really, really dark. Um, for example, if you see the shadow of a car on the street, you will notice that in the center uh, of the bottom of that car, uh, I mean on the floor is gonna be even darker so stuff like that if you close your hand for example in a fist you will notice that between your fingers there are kind of like black lines those black lines are not actually black lines we are not um, cartoony characters we don't have lines anywhere but those lines are kind of like there is no light in there so it's kind of like a shadow um, even if you're looking at light, you will see that some parts uh, of that fist that you're making are really, really, really dark. And that those lines that, that are made there are basically uh, occlusion shadows. Well, that's the way I can explain it uh, more easily. Um, if you have, uh, let's say, some a lot of objects together, uh, you will notice that uh, at some point they're getting even darker you have stuff in your closet you will see that between the bit like between the clothing you will have even darker shadows those are occlusion shadows and right now I'm trying to do what I was telling you a few minutes ago which is uh, creating a, a cast shadow on top of the object because it's projected on itself um, <clears throat> So that kind of thing is uh, actually really, really important to to make the object uh, more believable, because that what happens in real life. You have shadows, um, you have shadows projected on the floor. You have shadows projected on the object itself. is 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 really dark because we haven't add any bounce light yet. So just keep that in mind when you're working. Uh, some of the stuff is going to look really, really dark and really kind of like a fi film noir 
feeling which are these uh, those really old movies that are in black and white for example and you will get that feeling that this that your paintings are getting really dark but that happens when you haven't had any bounce light or fill lights or anything so right now I'm just trying to figure out the volume of it um, I'm adding some variations in that volume and I collapse the layers. To collapse the layers you can just select all the layers that you want and press Ctrl E or I believe you can do it selecting all the layers and then right click on the layers and click on where it says merge layers. <coughs> By the way if the layers are blocked you cannot do that. You cannot just press Ctrl E. You will have to select them and then press Ctrl E and that way it will work. Alright so now we're going to jump into highlights. The highlights are basically just where the light hits the most and per perpendicularly. Um, well this, this actually <laughs> is, is actually uh, where the light hits perpendicularly but um, I'm trying to like combine two things because there's a specularity um, and the highlights will be like the the brightest uh, spot but I'm I'm referring myself to the highlights are, are as the volume or where the light is hitting and <clears throat> it's, it's important to make that difference uh, because I'm just trying to explain as easy as possible and not get too too much into different uh, terms and stuff like that are complex so right now what I'm doing is just adding um, light where I believe it should be lit the most and that will mean just a brighter color of the same ones that you have you can just select it with the eyedropper and just uh, paint um, uh, a brighter color of that same color and that will kind of give the illusion that there is some uh, there is brightness there that like is even more bright than the rest of the of the image it's basically the opposite of what we were doing with the shadows now we're adding uh, light instead of adding shadows we're lighting we're, we're adding the opposite thing and as I'm doing this I notice that that bottom that lower part of the of what I'm doing of the place I'm, I'm painting right now is it could look like it's bent toward us so that's a cool thing um, I went back here and I'm I'm kind of like fixing some of the, the smoothness of the <laughs> of the painting because it's really really um, sharpened so what I did to do this is just grabbing the same color with the eyedroppers, mostly the ones in between, uh, not the darker, not the brightest, but kind of like the middle ones, and just painting at 50% opacity. Um, <clears throat> you can change the opacity with the numbers, uh, actually, when you're painting with the numbers on the keyboard, but the ones on top of the keyboard, not the ones on the right in the numerical keyboard just the ones on top so that way you'll see that you have a little bit more of volume there and now I'm kind of going to add uh, some specularity but not too much because the specularity is actually part of the it's more like a reflection uh, kind of thing um, but it's basically the color of the sky um, some of the, a, a little bit of the color of the sky could be there and it's supposed to be blue so that's what we're dealing with. We are adding some um, lighter color there and then something that I do is that I just paint the color as I, as I think it should be and then play with the opacity and you can see that I change it uh, very low like 20% and then I just blend it a little bit and that is the result I get. And now we're going to the bounce light and reflections but we're going to really concentrate on bounce light so a bounce light is is just like it sounds the light just comes 
and bounce and hits another wall and stuff like that. Imagine that you have a ball and it bounces that way. So that's basically what's happening. And because if this is curved, it will really catch the lighting that is hitting here. It will it will get that color again. But because the well the the light from the sun is not actually yellow, but the but the leaf is and this color here will hit the other color which is also uh, kind of like an orange brownish and it will look like even more even more um, orange or even more brown so it's kind of like a it kind of like makes everything more beautiful in a way when you have bounce light that's why when you have um, overcast days uh, which is a day that it doesn't have any sunlight coming because all the clouds are blocking it everything looks very grayish um, but it's not actually gray it's, it's just that those are the real colors of it you're just looking at it like if you have a big constant light on on the top of the on of your city and you're looking at everything at the f uh, like a, some kind of a flat color uh, but when you have a sunlight coming through, you have bounces of light from everything. So if you are in a place with a lot of nature, like uh, grass and stuff like that, just start looking greenish. Um, if you if you walk in like uh, one side of a wall, that, like a brick wall, just you'll start looking like reddish and stuff like that. So it really adds color to everything. And that's something you have to keep in mind in this case it will make everything way more orangey because <coughs> you have this uh, basically a, a brown orange uh, leaf uh, you can exaggerate things like I'm going to do right now I'm going to put more red to it to make it look uh, even nicer um, but remember every time that I do something like this I normally create a new layer just in case that I can change the opacity later if I want. Uh, don't don't just paint it right away. You could make mistakes, and if you're not making this in in a new layer, you could uh, really hurt your painting if you ha if you don't have the experience. All right, so now I'm going to just blend a little bit and continue to the next step but I believe it's starting to look uh, better like things are getting more colorful nicer um, it's just something that you're kind of like developing adding more ingredients and it's starting to look good uh, which you, when you're not adding the ingredients properly or you don't know what ingredients you should add uh, what happens is that you kind of like get discouraged uh, with the painting and it starts to look like really like like uh, I don't know what I'm doing right now and it's starting to look uh, a bit like daunting to do the painting it's, it's kind of like boring but when you add in the right ingredients and it's starting to look cool uh, you kind of keep want to keep doing it and that's uh, that's something that I think is really important when you're working that you kind of want to keep working on it because if you if you are like a concept artist for example and you don't like what you're painting um i'm not sure everyone anyone else is going to like it either so it's very important that you you kind of know uh, what to do to to get the proper result <clears throat> and sometimes you can like what you're doing but other people won't like it but at least you know that you did you did it well technically and that's that I, I believe that's important too like to be happy that what you deliver is what what you wanted to to deliver and it's not just something that uh, i didn't have time to paint this i just getting this because i have more time on the deadline that sometimes the deadlines are just daily you just have to accept it but I'm getting to another kind of topic here anyway the backlights and source of subsurface scattering 
subsurface scattering is basically what, what happens when you turn a land like a lantern on and you put your hand on top of it like your hand gets uh, reddish um, and that's really what to suffer scattering is is a light coming through the object and penetrating the surface of it and going through so depending on how thick or the composition of the object is um, the light will be um, you, you will notice this more or less um, I believe that the leaves are kind of a, um, a really translucent but are more translucent when they are green uh, or at least that's the impression that they gave me uh, when you see like a light that, like a tree and the light is trying to come through you will see those very very beautiful green leaves with uh, catching all the light and the light is going through them but in this case is is uh, completely dry and maybe in the edges you could have some sorts of scattering but I'm actually not sure not sure how much you will, you will be able to see this effect especially if it's laying down on the floor but because we are painting and we're, we're, we're just trying to achieve a result that looks good and looks beautiful we're just going to put some a little bit of rim light like like back uh, backlight on the edges and add some color on it like it's like if it's catching the light and everything is going like a little bit brighter so stuff like that <coughs> So the right now I I know it will make too much sense like where is that light coming from, uh, but as I said before we do have a little bit of freedom on what we're doing, and if I wanted this to look very very nice, um, I'll just add whatever I need to achieve that. And for me that looks nice when you have those little lightings, and you can see the difference of what we had at the beginning and what we have now, and I believe it's really really. Uh, going somewhere Notice that the subsurface scattering wasn't too much If we were painting like a face or something like that we will have a lot of subsurface scattering on the ears uh, That will be the play with more concentration of, of that <coughs> All right, so and now we're on the final stages of this image um, which which is are the final details and I, I said this a lot of times before and sorry if, uh, if you're bored of that information but uh, the details are really time and the time you spend painting the details are, is basically how much detail is going to have because there's not much to it um, with, with painting details what you'll need is try to keep a constant uh, size of brush unless you really want to cover things like if you want to do soften some kind of a surface you will have to use a bigger brush for example and kind of do that but if you're gonna really put detail try to work with a small brush right now I'm working with a 15 brush which is not that small really but because it is, this is a tutorial it is not actually like a high-end painting that I'm trying to do I'll just uh, do it this size and if I need to go even more detail on some parts, I'll just make it um, smaller. But the smaller, just keep in mind that the smaller you make your 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 brush, um, the the more you're going to spend painting the details because you have less a brush to cover. So that's something that you have to keep in mind all the time. It's very important. <coughs> And it, that is basically it in terms of detail, just adding and adding, fixing things, uh, trying to get rid of those bad edges. I'm just literally just grabbing the gray color on the background and just painting. And you don't want to keep the edges too perfect. That will make a kind of like a, a false uh, kind of a effect 
because in reality like you never see anything completely sharp or focused um, maybe if you were taking a picture with a really um, with a camera that it has no depth uh, of field uh, maybe you will catch something like that but that's almost impossible Look, everything will have like a some kind of like a little blurry edge uh, you, you wouldn't see things completely perfect so that's for sure don't never do uh, really really um, sharp edges or it will look like a, it's kind of like fake um, it also uh, asks more times unnecessarily um, I used to sharpen everything and do everything very very neat on rendering but it will it trust me will save you at least like 30% of the time to leave the edges a little bit blurry uh, so that's something to keep in mind and <clears throat> right now what I'm doing is just looking up at the photos and trying to copy some of the patterns that I see on the darkness on some parts of, of the of the leaves that I'm, that I'm looking at in the pictures and trying to understand the yeah like the lines of the the leaf are connected and, and everything and stuff like that but it's basically painting a lot of little things uh, and you have to spend some time on it right now I'm using a Cintiq which is something that I never tried before I just got it like uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago maybe a month ago I'm not completely sure and it's kind of different at the beginning but then now I'm trying and uh, now I'm really understanding the value of this tool turns out that it, even though it's a screen and it feels really weird like it's not is you're not painting on a canvas you're not drawing on a on a on a piece of paper it's just a screen so it feels kind of like if you were painting on a glass uh, basically and it feels really weird but it does keeps me concentrated like in focus of what i'm doing which is a really key part of the <laughs> of the of the work actually most of the time uh, when you're working on stuff like this and because you're in a computer the whole day you turn you, you kind of get to get distracted with the internet and things like that and that's something that I constantly try to avoid and but since I have the Cintiq I believe I've been more focused maybe because of the change of tool I'm not sure but it really does feel like that it does feel like I'm really more focused on what I'm doing like I'm, I'm not constantly checking the <clears throat> the internet stuff like that comments and things on Instagram or whatever and that really uh, is a huge help uh, in the difference of the workflow so if you haven't if you don't have a thing or you're not sure um, what I will say is that I definitely think that I needed a bigger one I need the I, I'm using right now the 22 inch um, I, I truly believe that I wouldn't be able to use the 16 um, resolution one the, the 16 inches one because it's really small for me like I, I cannot draw in a small screen uh, I, I cannot even draw on a small piece of paper it's just something it's like a personal um, decision and I will I will just use uh, a bigger paper when I'm paint I'm doing drawings traditionally because I, I like to draw big and <clears throat> I just got a new a new Cintiq is, is I don't know is the oldest is the old older model not the lastest one it's not the oldest but it's kind of like in, I think I believe it's the second generation I'm not sure but I believe it's the second one and is the black one but is the first generation it will be the gray one and I believe it works perfectly like the guy that sold sold it to me really took care of it 
there's no scratches then there's not anything and every and anything if if it had a scratch it wouldn't matter too much um i've heard because when you turn it on the the brightness of the screen just uh, really um, fix that and I believe you can change you can change that plastic that protects it so that's something that you have you want to keep in mind too if you buy one maybe you can change the plastic that comes on top like the screen and you will be having like a new thing <clears throat> The only thing I will be worried about if it's really scratch on the other side, like on the on the outside of the screen, or the or is like um, how you how you call it, like broke a scratch in, in any other way, or is missing a cable stuff like that. I will be worried, and it comes with a DVA DVI cable. That's something that you have to keep in mind too. Uh, you need a DVI port and you need a USB and you need electricity for it. So three cables. I thought it will be just two one two cables, the electricity and then connected to the computer through USB. But it turns out you also need the screen one. I didn't know at all. Okay, so right now I'm painting more of the I'm trying to fix that shadow shape. Uh, and then I'm going to bend the leaf a bit more because right now it's looking like that shadow doesn't make any sense too much so I'm going to <clears throat> use a lighter color I just grab it from another place and I'm going to fix that a bit I'm going to turn these tips of the leaf so it looks like it's bending and that way we could kind of um, Belief a bit more that the leaf is actually projecting a shadow on itself, which uh, some people I'm pretty sure didn't understand too much that <laughs> that little uh, part when I when I explained that. <clears throat> and what do I need here? I need a lighter color. I'm I'm just putting a lighter color there so you can really see. Uh, those little uh, edges of the of the leaf and getting rid of, of the other ones and now it's starting to look more like it's bending there it really make a difference that that little shape <clears throat> also I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to fix this shape a little it's a way to it doesn't look like there's any curve to it so I'm, I'm kind of fixing that all right I really not sure uh, how much I can I can say in this uh, part the final detail is so so much about interpretation of what you of what you had and what you need that it really comes to all the all the steps that we did before the steps that we did before are way more important than this right now here I, I believe I'm missing some highlights so I just add a lighter color to it uh, but I already had a base uh, of highlights before and I already have all the ingredients that I did before but right now I feel like it's missing that so I'm adding a little bit more so that's what the detail part is all about just kind of like fixing your image adding what you believe is needed um, I believe it needs more, needs more like holes on it uh, those little lines are really necessary uh, when I look at photos of, of leaves you can see how those little lines actually bend the, the leaf really really little bends that it makes to it so all the stuff is really important to to get the the feeling of the of this leaf to look more realistic <clears throat> 
for example, if I do these little lines here, I will later have to add some kind of a value change that tells me that there's something going on there with the shape that we can interpret as uh, like a little difference on the direction of that surface. <clears throat> maybe more shadow here maybe we could add some more red to it I'm not completely sure yet <clears throat> so create a new layer as you can see so I can add this reddish color to it which I believe is going to look good but I create a new layer just in case and this is this is actually a little bit more uh, bounce light to it because I believe it needed more and I'm painting it right now just in the shadow part uh, maybe I will paint a little bit of this to other parts of the of the leaf but I'm painting it um, how you say that like most of it is being painted just on the shadow part because I believe the shadows which are the darker uh, areas will catch more bounce light somehow it will it's not like you will you will catch it more but you will feel it uh, more <clears throat> instead of looking like darker of the same color let's add another color that is around you will probably have more brown leaves around and here I'm fixing that shadow because this part because it's bent down it will touch the ground um, that way or at least I believe it will do that again fixing things Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the result I got. Which is, again, something that is really important, that you like what you did. Um, if you don't, you know that you just have to keep practicing it. Uh, right now, I, I believe that shadow look way too dark, uh, too dark and brownish, so I just grab gray and I'm repainting uh, a bit on top. And again, shadows are really, really important to sell the where where is where the object is placed and everything will be judged by how that shadow is made. If you if you make that shadow wrong, it will look uh, it will look wrong. It will look like it's not there. It will look like it's a different kind of surface. Everything. Now this edge has to be fixed. New layer. Just painting there. And adding those colors. <clears throat> and you just have to basically just keep your w eyes wide open to be aware of what's going on with this image, what parts are undone, stuff like that. Here I'm, ad I'm adding way more darkness to it and now I'm using a 10 pixel uh, brush which is smaller than the one I was using before, I was using a 15 uh, and now I'm using a 10 pixel so that's a, that's a difference in how small the brush is now I went back to 20 because I believe that it, I don't need it to be that uh, small and I think that's enough for the <coughs> for the stuff that I'm doing right now. So <coughs> some of the small details that I'm adding right now is just because I I saw a, uh, the picture again that I was using as reference, and 
it turns out that the edges of the leaves are are really are supposed to be really really um, like dark I guess it's because they are dry and they are like um, very um, I don't know burnt is if, if that is burnt is the word but I wanted to do that effect and those little lines that I'm adding is because I, I, I feel like it needed uh, a little bit more of that <clears throat> here I'm adding this little line and it kind of looks like those uh, direction of the surface change that I was telling you about with the those t uh, change of values it will it will make it like it's bending a little uh, where those lines are happening and now uh, we're about to wrap things up here like it, we don't need any more detail than this too much um, it's about to be done if you if you get to do too much detail to it then it will look like over detail and there's nothing wrong actually with that but I believe it's kind of un unnecessary now I used to believe that everything should be as detailed as possible but it comes to how far are you going to really look at this image uh, if it's going to be look really close if you're doing a painting of just the leaf to print it in a I don't know one one per one meter image maybe but if it's going to be the small image not much so we apply the base color then the shadows and the and cast shadows and occlusion some highlights to know where the light is going to hit the most <coughs> then some bound light, bounce light that added more color to it uh, with the reflections and everything and search to scattering how the light gets through the object or in this case the leaf and then getting all that information to to get the final look that we want on our uh, image uh, it's basically just reusing everything that we did and applying to it applying it all at the same time to get this result <coughs> And you could keep painting details forever, really. You could just paint uh, for hours and hours. But the I will I will say that the the thing that you should do is just consider this painting finished and go to the next one so you can keep practicing. But get it to a decent amount of um, finishing. So I'm going to share some information here. Thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you want to check other cool channels, there's Easy Sosa channel, and in Spanish you have some um, some ones at the right, and on the left you can see my links. I have the Instagram, Twitter, and there's a group uh, of Facebook groups. The links are in the description, where you can share the stuff that you do, um, and there's a lot of people getting there. I don't know how many followers we have right now there, but there. Every every day there's like five new or six, uh, sometimes ten uh, daily. So there's always people coming. If you want to share your work, you can do it there with no problem. 